Hello, everyone, and welcome to Tuesdays with Suzanne. Tuesdays with Suzanne. And today, I want to speak about the particular attribute that we, it was one of the attributes that we spoke about last week in picking up the pieces. And remember that life right now, or in your life in certain times and circumstances, can feel like it's exploding or imploding on you. There are many stressors in the world around us today, um, from school shootings to wars that are unjust, to racism, to sexism, people taking away other people's rights, you know, all kinds of things going on outside that are honestly, honestly, when you feel them, when you feel into them, they're difficult to hold. Yeah. And particularly if there's something going on in your own life, your own life that may be exploding or imploding. I've spoken with several friends recently and they have family members who are unstable emotionally or due to addictions or due to health issues, but dealing with them day after day after day with the level of up and down and up and down or the unknown of what is when it's going to go off next can be very, very exhausting. And sometimes when you're a healthcare person or you care deeply, you care deeply about the people around you, which is most of us, thank goodness, it becomes hard to stay present in those circumstances. Yes, yes. Because they are depleting, they're naturally depleting. And that's a fact of life. So one of the things I want to talk about today is the attribute of commitment to your own process, your own health and well-being. Whatever it takes for you to maintain your sense of being an oasis of calm within yourself so that you can return to the connection in whatever form you're having to be connected in a way that is less depleting for you. Certain circumstances will always be depleting. It's the way it goes. It's natural. It's human for that to occur. However, it does not have to be constantly depleting to the nervous system, okay? So let's talk about that for a moment. We've done a lot of grounding and filling in the past. We've worked with the different wisdom areas of the body, the heart, the gut, the pelvis, your bones, your legs and feet, your integrated brain, and all of these are extremely, extremely helpful in your commitment, that's the attribute we're working with today, your commitment to maintaining or returning to your inner oasis when it starts to run low, when it starts to run dry, okay? So let's talk about that for a moment. The first thing that each of us has to be able to admit is that we're actually running low or running dry. You don't just squawk at people or get irritable. You actually say to yourself, whoa, my tank's a little low. I didn't get good sleep last night or um, that argument that happened yesterday that came out of the blue or the news about ABCD. I'm feeling pretty low right now. Okay, that's your first thing is that awareness of, oh, I'm running low. Okay, second thing will be to step into a, a level of curiosity within yourself about what you can do to refill. Now, most of us, if you've studied with me for any amount of time or hung out with me on, on these calls for any amount of time, you know that there are certain things that rejuvenate you. Getting grounded and full again, using breath that calms you, resting back in your bones or your heart or your gut or your legs and feet, wherever. There are many, many things that can help us rejuvenate. There are other things that also help. And I want to just mention these again because many of you, and I think most of the world right now, is dealing with a number of different stressors that literally throw our nervous systems into chaos. And trying to find where the pieces are and deal with them is something that's important. So one of the things that I do and that I use constantly is journaling. Journaling. When something comes up that really throws me for a loop and, and all I can do is feel waves of emotion or frustration or whatever it is, I go and pull out my journal and start to write. 
or I pull out my computer and start to type, or I pull out my phone and start to talk in, if I can dictate into my phone. So what I'm saying is it's important to let the mud swirl until it settles so that you can see clearly what the actual issues are. Because oftentimes the stressors in our world are very, they create upheaval in our emotional field. The field gets muddy. So think about it. Where would be the very best? Where's your first wisdom area? That's your go-to wisdom area when you want to clarify something. Your bones, settling back in your bones. So we are going to do a very, um, I'm going to do a brief meditation this morning to keep this short. I just sneeze. So we're back. And we're going to be practicing today embodying in your bones and using a quieting breath so that when you find yourself in emotional upheaval, you know how to return to your own inner oasis and prime the pump of whatever's happening for you. So, okay. Letting your eyes close, settle back. Good. Good. Hmm. And as you breathe, I'm going to actually suggest that you breathe in and out through your nose. However, if you are having allergy issues right now, and that's not really a possibility, feel free to breathe softly through your mouth. And allow your breathing to be slow and steady. <sighs> Inhaling and exhaling at a pace that feels good to you. And as you breathe, inviting your curiosity, your awareness and your curiosity to lead you from the point where the breath enters your nostrils, noticing the sensations of it as it travels through your sinuses, moves on down into your throat, down into your trachea, right on down into your lungs. Feeling the rise and fall of your chest as you breathe. The rise and fall of your belly. What are the sensations of that? And allowing, allowing yourself to begin to explore deeper, deeper, deeper in your body. So if you're feeling your heart and the rise and fall of your chest and your lungs, allow yourself to drop right on back into your bones, the bones of your spine, those big, sturdy bones that rest behind your heart, all of the organs of your torso. They support the basket of your ribs, your sternum. Yeah. Sturdiest form of connective tissue in the body is our bones. And we, you and I, when you're ready, can enter that inner sanctum of your bones. And I think of it as a metaphoric temple or a sacred space where you can enter, it's sturdy, it's quieter than the busyness of your lungs and your heart and your cardiovascular flow and all of that. It's quieter. I think of our bones as being like the trees of our bodies. Hmm. So entering your inner sanctum, 
where you can steady, get still. Yeah. Hmm. For me, in my mind's eye, I have a chair there that I rest in. It's a comfortable chair. It's very supportive of me and my body. Why don't you find a place in your inner sanctum that works for you and allow yourself to simply settle there? Good. Continuing to breathe. Good. Mm. Settling deeper and deeper. Steadying, steadying yourself in the midst of the storm of your life. (laughs) Good. Ah, And as things begin to get steady for you, remember your commitment to returning here on a regular basis because this, this place offers you a tremendous amount of support, a tremendous amount of steadiness, clarity, and the ability to stay present with what is. Yeah. Continuing to breathe. Inhaling and exhaling. And often, often, when I inhale and exhale, from this place, it becomes clear. I may have done any of the other activities that I do that help me process and get clarity. Journaling, walking, running, talking with a friend, whatever it is, whatever it is. Clarity begins to arrive at the door of your inner temple. It may show up in terms of images, words, a path to take, a person, you name it, it's there. And you've committed to coming here to your own inner sanctum, your own inner temple, and resting deeply as frequently as you need to for whatever's going on in your world. So take a moment now and commit to doing this. 